plate tectonics is the theory that there are pieces of the Earth's lithosphere that are constantly moving, and they are moving because of the convection currents in the mantle. In order to understand the theory of plate tectonics, you need to understand a little bit about how the Earth is sort of divided up. Now we've talked about the layers of the Earth. We all know that the top layer of the Earth is called the crust, and that that's a really thin layer compared to the rest of the layers. Below the crust we have the mantle. The mantle is a pretty thick layer compared to, um, especially compared to the crust. Now what we didn't talk about is that really the mantle is divided into other layers. But what you need to really understand is that the upper portion of the mantle, so let's say this area in here, the top portion of the mantle, and the crust combined are what we call the lithosphere. Now when the lithosphere moves over the asthenosphere, which is the layer that is directly below the lithosphere, then our plates can move. Now this map shows us the different plates that make up the surface of the Earth. So you can see this brown one right here is the North American and the Caribbean plate. The green one right here, the Eurasian plate, and that continues over to this side. Remember the Earth is really round, it's not flat. Now we have our Australian plate, the Juan de, Juan de Fuca plate, this little one is the Philippine plate. Um, you can see there's a lot of different ones. At the edge of every plate, you see these dark lines. Now those are our plate boundaries. Now depending on how our plates are moving, we have different types of boundaries and different types of landforms. There are three types of plate boundaries that you need to be aware of. The first kind is divergent, and this is where they are separating or dividing, so the plates are moving in opposite directions from each other. We'll go into more details in just a minute. The second type is convergent, where the two plates are coming together. They're moving towards each other. And then the last type is transform, where you have two plates that are going in opposite directions past each other. The first of our three types of boundaries is the divergent boundary. Here you can see we have the oceanic crust, and the upper portion of the mantle. So this part right here is our lithosphere. Now that's sitting on top of the asthenosphere. If you'll notice, there's a boundary right here where it's red. One side, one plate, is going one direction, and the other side is going the opposite direction. That gap is filled in with magma that's coming up from the asthenosphere. Now remember, that's molten magma. So it's going to come up here, fill in this space, and then it cools and hardens. You'll notice that the magma doesn't go all the way up to the surface because it cools before it gets there. So you end up with these really deep valleys. An example of a divergent boundary on Earth is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. If you look at this picture right here, you can actually see all along here, there's a place in the Atlantic Ocean where the um, plates are splitting apart, moving apart, and that actually cuts through Iceland right up here. And it looks something like this running through Iceland. You can see how there's these tall cliffs on either side and there's water in here. Underwater, it looks something like this. This is a picture of a scuba diver in that rid um, mid-Atlantic ridge. In Africa, there's the Great Rift Valley that is also an example of plates pulling apart and creating these enormous valleys with really steep sidewalls. Our next type of plate boundary is convergent boundaries. There are actually three types of conver convergent boundaries. The first is oceanic-oceanic. So that's when two ocean um, crusts come together. When that happens, one goes underneath, or subducts, under the other. So if you look here, we have our crust and our lithosphere going below the lithosphere of another oceanic plate. Now remember that that crust on the oceanic plate is made of basalt. So it gets hot, it melts, it goes up here into the surface, and we end up with these volcanoes, which actually end up creating island arcs. The other landform that is common with this type of convergent boundary is a trench. Because if you notice here, is that um, crust is coming in here, it bends. We have a trench right here, 
and an island arc along here. The Aleutian Islands, which run um, to the west of Alaska here along this plate boundary, are an example of oceanic-oceanic convergence. You get this arch of islands that are formed through um, the convergence of those two oceanic plates. The next of our convergent boundaries is oceanic continental convergence. So this is what you have when you have oceanic crust made of basalt, more dense than the granitic crust of the continents. So continental granitic crust stays on top because it's less dense. The oceanic crust dives underneath. Again, we're going to get a trench. And you'll notice here that we also have some volcanic mountains that form. A great example of this type of uh, plate boundary is the Cascade Mountain Range that runs um, through Washington and Oregon. One of the most famous, probably, volcanoes in North America would be Mount St. Helens, this mountain right here, and that's part of the Cascade Range along with uh, Mount Rainier. The third convergent boundary type is continental-continental. So when you have two continental crust plates moving toward each other, you're going to end up with some pretty big mountains. One has to give, so it goes underneath, but you end up with all this folding and you get these really big mountain ranges. Where the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate, both continental crust, are colliding, you end up with these giant mountains that we know as the Himalayas. So this right here, you can see that range is the Himalayan range. Um, here's a picture of what they look like. You can see there's tall, jagged, uh, rocky mountains. And we've also got Everest, the tallest mountain on Earth. You're probably wondering how the Rocky Mountains in your backyard formed. So the big difference between how those formed and the Cascade Mountains that are on the west coast of the United States is that normally we have this, um, when we have this subduction, it's pretty, pretty deep. So right along the edge of the coast is where we get our mountains. But in the case of the Rockies, what happened was that subduction was very shallow when it was because it was so shallow, all the melting of the crust and the um, mountain formation that happened was farther inland, farther away from the coast. And so that's why we have these beautiful mountains in our backyard and we're not right along the coast of, or the two plate boundaries. The third type of plate boundary you need to understand is the transform boundary. This is when you have two boundaries or two plates that come together and they move in opposite directions. So they're moving parallel to each other but in opposite directions. One of the things that happens with transform boundaries or faults is that as they're trying to slide past each other, these two separate plates, um, sometimes they end up like getting hung up or stuck and when that happens eventually it breaks free and the two plates are allowed to move and they release a lot of energy and you end up with earthquakes. The San Andreas Fault is a major transform fault boundary that runs along um, th from the south to the north end of California, and actually I think it even starts in Mexico. But this is a picture of what that looks like from above the fault and when you're looking down on it. And one of the things that happens when you have transform fault boundaries is something like this. This is part of the Calaveras Fault Line, which is really just kind of a branch of the San Andreas. But it's in Northern California and there's a lot of creep there and you can see that this sidewalk has actually shifted because of that transform boundary right there. Remember the theory of plate tectonics is the idea that all of those pieces of the Earth's lithosphere, the plates, those are constantly moving and though they're moving very slowly, only about one to maybe ten centimeters per year, but it's usually closer to one centimeter per year, they're moving but something has to drive that motion. And the idea is that they're driven by convection currents in the mantle. So remember that the mantle is a lot of molten um, lava, right? So we've got this material that close to the core, where it's very, very hot, it's heating up. It's kind of like the burner on a stove. So it gets heated up, it starts to rise, because as material heats up, it expands. When it expands, its volume increases, so its density actually goes down, causes it to rise, and then it cools down. Once it cools, it's now more dense, so it starts to sink, and you get this cycle. In this picture that you see here, where the mid-Atlantic ridge is, remember that is a divergent boundary, because if you look at this, we have 
that hot and cold circling in opposite directions. So it's moving the plates apart. It's kind of like they're on a conveyor belt and they're being moved away from each other. Now maybe if they're moving the same or towards each other, they're moving in opposite directions but towards each other instead of away from each other, we're going to end up with um, convergent plates. So they're moving to each other. The, the conveyor belt is taking them on a ride towards the same place. And then if you've got a transform fault, they're going in opposite directions but side by side from each other. So one would maybe go this way and one would go this way. So remember, these plates are moving very, very slowly, about 1 to 10 centimeters per year. When Pangaea began to break apart, it was 225 million years ago. So it's taken 225 million years for the Earth to go from having Pangaea, one supercontinent, to having all of the continents that we have now, separate, in different locations, with dif definitely different um, landforms and things like that. So just to kind of review, where we have divergent plates, we have plates that are moving apart from each other. One of the most famous areas for plates moving apart from each other is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And that's where these two plates right here are the Eurasian and the North American plate are separating from each other. So all along here, we have this separation. It comes way down here too to the African plate and the South American plate. And that's, again, part of the reason that we have, or the reason that we have the... Um, Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Now we have convergence um, in a lot of different places. One of them right here though at the South American plate and this one right here. Now the Andes Mountains, maybe you've heard of those. The Andes Mountains are actually right along this coast of, the South, Ameri of South America. Um, and that's explained by this plate moving in subducting underneath the continent, and then those mountains form. Another convergence area that we talked about, where those Aleutian Islands are, is up here. These plates are two oceanic crusts moving towards each other. We get the um, island arc there. You're also going to see convergence in this area of the Juan de Fuca plate and the North American plate. Now we know the Nazca plate is moving towards the South American plate, and we know the, Philipp or the uh, Juan de Fuca and the Pacific plate are moving in the other direction. So this right here is another example of the divergent plates, right here. The Antarctic plate is also moving away from the Pacific plate, so you have divergence there as well. And we know we have a transform boundary up there in California where these two are moving in opposite directions. Also, where we know the Indian plate is moving toward the Eurasian plate, where the Himalayas are forming, we have convergence of two continental plates. Remember those giant mountains. Now I want to know, can you describe the theory of plate tectonics, compare the major types of plate boundaries, and explain the process that moves the plates, you should be able to do all of those things for your next test. If you can't, you need to get some help.